If you've got a quad like this or any other one, chances are very strong that you've got a bunch of these lipo batteries. And uh, lipo batteries are basically the heart of uh, flying quadcopters or basically any sort of RC aircraft. Now, these things are lipo batteries. Without them, we don't fly. And we treat them like crap. We take them up, we ask them to give us as much juice as they can right now. We smash them into brick walls. We drop them down elevator shafts doing f fancy tricks. We smash into things and we bend them out of shape. We crack them up and have to replace the leads on them. Everything needs to get taped up so that it stays together. We beat the crap out of our lipo batteries. And to some degree, they can handle that. But every once in a while, we need to show our lipos a little bit of love. And the way we can do that is to put them at a storage voltage when we're not using them. And if you don't know, the proper storage voltage for a lipo battery should be 3.8 volts per cell. That's where the feels the most comfortable. That's where it's happiest resting. And you can leave a LiPo battery at 3.8 volts per cell for months and months and months and months and have no ill effects on the battery. However, if you leave your battery above that, 4.2, like a fully charged battery, or significantly below that, 3.5, 3.1 volts per cell, you will have damage to your battery over the long term if that's where you leave it, at a voltage much below storage or a voltage much above storage. So what you want to do is when you're not using your batteries for perhaps more than a week, you should bring them down to storage voltage and you'll really get a lot more life out of them. So how do you bring them to storage voltage? Well, basically what you need to do is attach them to your charger, choose the storage setting on your charger, whichever one you may own, and um, then just put the battery through that cycle. Now, on a decent battery charger, if your battery is below the storage voltage, so say for example, your battery is at 3.5 volts per cell, the storage program on your charger will bring your battery up to voltage, at the storage voltage at 3.8. If your battery is above the storage voltage, the charger will actually burn off power from your battery and bring it down to the proper storage voltage of 3.8 volts per cell. So that's what I'm needing to do to mine. I got to show my batteries a little bit of love. I got to 20 inches of snow yesterday and uh, my plan to go out flying today basically got cancelled. And so I need to bring a bunch of my batteries down to the proper storage voltage. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do on my particular charger. And um, from that, you should be able to figure out how to make it work on yours. So let's move over to the bench and the charger and see how to put it all together. Okay, so I'm, I'm over here now at the desk and the charger, and I'm sorry, but I had to switch over to my cell phone in order to to kind of get some better video of this. My camera wasn't picking up some of the things on the screen that we're going to look at now. So what I've done is I've put my battery that I need to discharge in this case down to storage voltage inside my LiPo charging bag. I'm just going to scrunch that down for a sec so it's out of the way. Let's see what we can do here. And if we come in close, I've already connected this to my charger. Oh, please focus. And we can see that this battery, this LiPo, it's a four cell battery and basically it's at full charge, 4.2 volts. Now, I'm not gonna be using it for a while, so I'm going to bring it down to a proper storage voltage. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I happen to be using a, a Hota, uh, what is this here? B6 Pro, I'm sorry if that's not really visible. That's the model that I have and the brand that I have. This would be very similar on any other brand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the settings for this channel. And what I'm going to do is come up to the top and choose the one that says storage. 
you can see that it automatically chooses a voltage of 3.8 volts as the storage voltage for me. It's recognized that this is a 4S battery and it has a current setting of 3 amps. That is basically meaningless when it's doing a discharge. Basically, this charger will only discharge at 0.3 amps. So it doesn't matter really what this says for the discharge. And now all I really need to do is come down here and hit start task. And what we can see very quickly is that we've gone into a storage discharge mode. You can see that it is, whoops, pulling minus 0.3 amps. So it's burning off power. And we can see that it's slowly going down. It's pulled out four or five milliamp hours already. And we can see that the voltage is very slowly dropping. So over the next little while, this charger is going to continue pulling power out of the battery and uh, take it down to 3.8 volts. And once it's there, that battery will get start that battery. <laughs> That battery will be at storage charge and uh, we'll be able to store it for many months without any problems. So that's really how you set it up in your charger. Um, let's head back over to the, to the computer and uh, just finish up with a little chat. So coming back here over to the desk, kind of to wrap this up, um, with your LiPo batteries, if you're not going to be using them for periods longer than like about a week, you really should take them to a storage charge of 3.8 volts per cell. You can use your normal charger to do it. If it's below 3.8 volts per cell, the charger will bring it up. If it's above 3.8, the charger will bring it down and you'll get much longer life out of your batteries. It doesn't matter if you're using larger batteries, four, six cell batteries for your large quads or single cells like this for your tiny whoops that you buzz around your house. If you aren't using them, take them to storage voltage. They'll love you for it.